Uh, good morning. This is part four of the series of part five rather series of swelling. And now we are going to actually practice what we have learned in previous videos. So it's in a form of drill. And the first swelling which I have chosen is a sebaceous cyst. So whenever an examiner is going to come to you, then he is going to ask following questions usually. In addition to obviously other questions, whatever he wants to ask. These are describe your clinical findings, which means history as well as examination, usually. What is your diagnosis? Justify your diagnosis. How will you confirm the diagnosis? What is the treatment? How do you want to operate? What are the complications of the swelling? I am going to do a role play and actually I have called an examiner to examine me. This is the patient. The photograph of the thing which possibly she will say to examine me. And let's uh, say what does the examiner say. This is the patient for you with the swelling. Kindly examine it and then when you are ready, let me know. Okay, uh, can I examine you? Okay, thank you very much. I am going to ask you a few questions also. Uh, yes ma'am, I am ready. Okay. Describe your clinical findings. Well ma'am, uh, the, the patient gives a history of, it's a young patient and this patient noticed a swelling many months ago and this has gradually increased in size and uh, the patient noticed the swelling while combing the hair and she says now whenever she combs the hair it scratches the swelling and she feels some pain and discomfort in that and it is slowly growing and she has also noticed that two times or one or two times in last many months there was some discharge and it was foul smelling from the swelling and in addition to this she also says that uh, there's a uh, two more swellings in the scalp what you have seen when I examined the swelling the swelling was tense and hemispherical and its diameter was roughly 3 cm. Its surface is smooth and a punctum is visible. Edge is well defined and easy to feel. The color of the skin is same as elsewhere. It is non tender and the temperature of the skin is also same. To me, it looks like solid. Its composition, because its consistency is hard. Although fluctuation is difficult to listen, but I can feel that it is fluctuant. It is not transluminant. It is attached to the skin. It's not attached to the underlying muscles, and the local lymph nodes are not enlarged. What is your diagnosis? Depending on history of clinical examination, my diagnosis is sebaceous cyst. Justify your diagnosis. I say it is a special cyst because this swelling is attached to the skin. It is not from subcutaneous tissue and special cyst arises from the skin. Moreover, I can see the diagnostic sign punctum which is of the special cyst. So that is why I think it is a special cyst. How is a sebaceous cyst and its punctum formed? You see, sebaceous glands are present in the skin and the ducts open in the hair follicle and that's the fixed part. Whenever the duct gets blocked, the gland always swells. So somehow the other, when the duct of the species can block, then the secretions are retained behind and it swells. And once it swells, there appears as a small lump, which is the sebaceous cyst. Now as it enlarges, the fixed point is where its mouth is opening the hair follicle. So that point gets depressed and it appears like a very small opening 
which is called as a punctum. How will you confirm the diagnosis? In presence of a punctum, in fact, one may not need an investigation to diagnose. But uh, if uh, a finely resplendent cytology can diagnose it. What is the treatment? The treatment is excision under local anesthesia. Why do you want to operate? There are two reasons. Number one, in this case, the patient is feeling that causing problem to him because whenever he combs the hair, it gets scratched. Twice there was a discharge, and she says the false smelling, this was not good. And equally, if we leave it behind, it can get complicated. What are the complications? The complications are infected sebaceous cyst, sebaceous horn. Cox peculiar tumor, and if this is present over a area where hair are prominent, the hair do not grow on that area. So there is baldness over that area. What's a Cox peculiar tumor? Cox peculiar tumor, it's a misnomer in fact, it's not a tumor. What happens is when an infectious cyst gets infected, then because of the infection, the pus drains out, it ruptures and it starts healing by granulation tissue but since it is infected it does not heal and granular tissue tends to form more and more and this granular tissue takes a protruding form and gives an appearance of a tumor so that is why it is called as a Cox peculiar tumor Why sebaceous horn is formed? Sebum is present within the sebaceous gland sometimes it so happens this sebum that comes out of the duct but since it is coming out at a very slow speed it tends to become dry and it results in the appearance of a spike on spheres or protuberance which looks like an horn so therefore it is called as sebaceous horn what is treatment of infected sebaceous cyst whenever a cyst gets infected it's the infection which takes precedence. So therefore antibiotics should be given. And if it does not subside the antibiotic worsens, then it means it has pus and dead tissue in it. So pus has to be drained and dead tissue has to be deprived. Now such a wound should never be closed. The reason is, if an infected wound is closed, infection reoccurs, so it should be left open to heal by secondary tension or once infection subside, then one can do delayed primary closure. Can it reoccur after operation? Yes, it can reoccur if the surgeon is not cautious or expert and during excision, it leaves behind a part of sebaceous cyst wall there. Thank you. Thank you very much. And do I pass? <laughs> okay, coming back to it, now if you see this thing, this is a sebaceous cyst, by the way these pictures are from Norman Brown's, not my own. This is the punctum and if you see its color, it is red. If I touch it, it will be painful, it will be tender, it will be warm. These are the clinical signs of inflammation. If these signs are present in the spacious cyst, it is an infected spacious cyst. Now, if you see this thing, this is a close up. What you see this thing is the sebum. The sebum is dried, so therefore it looks like a horn and it's a spacious horn. If you see clearly this thing, then you see this thing as if there is some growth, in fact this is not the growth, this is a granular tissue which is giving, which is giving it an appearance of a growth, Cox peculiar tumor and here if you see on the scab multiple cysts and in this area of the scab the hairs are not growing that well, giving rise to baldness. Please show me the first slide, reverse slide. Yes, no, next picture. Now, this is the diagrammatic representation of the sebaceous cyst. 
This is the Savish's gland. And this is opening into the site of the hair follicle. This gets blocked. This is distending and sebum is collecting into it. When it's going to expand more, this is the fixed part. It won't expand proportionally and it will appear as a dip and you're going to get is a punctum. Once it gets infected, there's inflammation around it which gives rise to the classical signs of inflammation which is rubor, dubor, calor as you remember, pain, tenderness, redness, increased temperature. When the infection is going to come more, this thick pus is going to find its way out, it is going to burst it open, it is going to come out and the healing is going to occur by secondary tension, lot of granular tissue is going to form, not very rarely, but it is very exuberant and neglected, then it results in the cock peculiar tumour. I hope this helps you. We are going to do further drills and hopefully next we might be discussing a lipoma or a ganglia. Have a good day. Thank you very much.